Welcome to our VSERT Level 1-2 Technical Award Bite Size Introduction for the Subject Area of Graphic Design. This webinar will guide you through the structure of the qualification, the exam and the non-exam assessment and will provide an overview of the quality assurance process. There will also be a summary of the teaching and learning materials and other resources we have available to support your delivery. Lastly, it will provide details of the provider development team if further support is required or if you have any other questions. Firstly, there will be an overview of the qualification. This is the qualification structure for graphic design. The guided learning hours are 141 and includes 120 hours for delivery, 17 hours and 30 minutes for the non-exam assessment, plus two hours preparation and research time, and one hour 30 minutes for the exam assessment. The TQT is 155 hours, and this includes homework you might set and or independent learning. The non-exam assessment has a 60% weighting and the exam assessment has a 40% weighting. The content assessed in the EA and the NEA will be sampled from across the full breadth of the qualification. The overall qualification grades are a level one pass, up to a distinction, and for a level two, a pass up to a distinction star. This slide shows a typical two-year delivery model. This is only a suggestion, and it is to help illustrate the new structure so you can visualize how it's going to work for you. It essentially follows a very similar structure to that of a GCSE. In the first year is for delivery, where there are no summative assessments, and the second year is the assessment year. It's been designed this way to allow the first year of delivery to be focused entirely on teaching the content of the qualification. This really allows you to focus on ensuring the learners are building up knowledge and skills and gives you as much time as possible to teach the qualification content so that your learners are ready for their assessments. All technical awards now have a terminal assessment rule as stipulated by Ofqual and the DFE. This means that the external examinations must be taken at the end of the qualification and the non-exam assessment, i.e. the synoptic project, has been completed. We will be releasing the NEA briefs on the 1st of September each year. It can also be administered from September 2 if all the content has been taught. We think all the content could have could have comfortably been delivered by December, ready to start the NEA in January, but scum, some schools may, may get through everything sooner. The final marks will need to be submitted to the portal by the 30th of April each year, in which the learner evidence will be moderated. It can be delivered over three years and some centres might want to start delivering it in year nine although we recommend a two-year delivery model so it coincides with GCSEs. There is one unit that contains six content areas for graphic design. The specification includes the indicative content and the teaching guidance that will help support your delivery. Formative assessment can help you track your learner's progress in the, first, in the first year of studying this qualification. Keeping a record of each formative assessment result will allow you to monitor your learner's ongoing progress, predict a final grade and identify if any further interventions are required. There are various sources of data for factors such as end of topic tests, discussions with learners to assess their depth and breadth of knowledge of their subject content, homework and independent study tasks. Also engagement with practical activities and outcomes of practical tasks, performance at key stage three, teacher observations during practical tasks using the NEA practical assessment criteria. 
There are also many resources such as learner roundups in the teaching materials, sample assessment materials and prepare to teach activities that are available on our website for further support for your formative assessment. Other performance indicators that include mark schemes and mark ranges. It's worth noting that the range of marks in the mark schemes could also be a performance indicator. For example, as a guide, seven to 12 marks would be a distinction, strong level two merit. Four to six marks would be a merit, strong level two pass. And not to three marks would be in the level one range. Another useful way to track your learner's progress is to use overall grading descriptors in the specification. In our Prepare to Teach session, we go into this in a little more detail about formative assessment, and on screen now you can see a range of methods. Take a few moments to consider, which do you use? Do you use a wide range of activities? Do your learners get assessment fatigue? Think more broadly, could you develop your practice to make things easier for you or better for your learners? I know I have my favorites as a teacher, but I need to be mindful that all learners are different and respond differently. So making things fun, diversifying the approaches and reviewing the impact and success of my approach is really important. There will now be more detail about the non-exam assessment, including the sample assessment material that is also available. The NEA is a practical project that your learners undertake under controlled and supervised conditions. It has a set number of tasks that are to be completed in 17 hours and 30 minutes, plus the two hours preparation and research time. The NEA is externally set by NCFE and there will only be one attempt at the NEA per session, so there is no resubmission opportunity. For graphic design, the NEA is 60% of the technical award and has a total of 120 marks. A different NEA brief will be released every September and it will target assessment objectives AO1, AO2, AO3, AO4 and AO5. This slide shows a summary of the NEA tasks for graphic design, including the marks that are to be awarded for each section. The key point to note here is that when you are considering the learner journey and sequencing the curriculum, the content areas need to be continually linked to the NEA and its associated tasks. It is also worth considering how your learner journey also links to the external assessment too. So in relation to preparing for the NEA, there is subject specific tutor guidance that has been produced to support the delivery of the level one, two technical awards for both the NEA and the EA. It is not intended to replace the specification documents, but should be used in conjunction with them to support the successful delivery and completion of the qualification and assessments. You'll find this document in the support material section on, of the qualification page on our website. The NEA will be electronically available on the 1st of September in the year of certification and the final marks are to be submitted to the portal by the 30th of April. All teaching must be complete prior to accessing the assessment and the learner must be booked onto the NEA associated with the year of completion. Prior to commencing the formal set hours for the NEA time, learners should be allocated two hours of preparation and research time. During this time, learners may have access to the project brief, but, not, but may not access the tasks. This two hour period is entirely open book where learners can access their teaching and learning materials, textbooks, the internet and other published materials. From this, they should then develop a research support pack, which then can be used as their source of information when completing the NEA. This is the only support material that is permitted during the completion of the NEA tasks unless otherwise stated within each task instructions and must be submitted to the tutor at the end of each session and kept secure. The material developed in the planning, preparation and research time does not have to be submitted as assessment evidence. The research pack should be no more than four sides of A4 in font size 12 and this can be handwritten or electronic. Some tasks within the NEA may permit the use of uh, the internet to support the completion of tasks. 
Learners will be required to submit a copy of their internet browsing history if it is permitted to ensure that the controls around internet use are adhered to. Where the NEA allows for research requiring the use of the internet, learners must also reference the sources in their work and learners must cite sources of information within the NEA. There is a useful table in section 8 that will show if the use of the internet is permitted and if the internet browsing history is required in the tutor guidance documents. There is also specific guidance for each task within the NEA and the inclusion of these tasks is to illustrate the proposed structure and timings, required resources, in addition to the pack developed in the preparation and research time and any additional requirements around delivery or controls. Within the regulations section for the conduct of the NEA, instructions are provided on the correct administration of the NEA. NEA tasks must be issued one at a time and in the correct sequence to appropriately meet the requirements of the task in terms of resources and organisation of the learning environment. All learners should start the task at the same time to promote fairness and prevent unfair learner advantage and aid centre manageability. Learners can rework their evidence at any point during the supervised sessions, but supervisors must not give any feedback to a learner on how a task can be um, improved. And learners' work must not be assessed, marked or internally quality assured during the supervised sessions. And learners will have one opportunity to sit the NEA each session. Therefore, if a learner does not achieve, they will need to be re-registered to sit the NEA and the EA for the next series. Centres will be provided with training opportunities for how to administer and assess the NEA. They will provide valuable information to help you understand our mark schemes, supporting you to run your own standardisation sessions prior to the assessment window opening. These events are a great opportunity to expand your knowledge and understanding of the VCERT technical awards and are suitable for both assessors and IQAs delivering on these qualifications. Attendance to these sessions will be checked as part of your annual monitoring review. The VSA administration can be found on our website on preparing for the moderation page. It consists of a series of videos supporting you through the administrative requirements associated with moderation, including accessing and uploading assessment material and submitting marks. The prepare to assess training will help you develop your understanding of the grading criteria when assessing your learners responses to the internally assessed units, and it will provide valuable information to help you understand our mark schemes. And from September 2024, there will be internal standardisation training made available. And this continuous professional development package is designed to bring your teams together to align assessment decisions and expectations for the externally moderated components of the VSERT qualification. There are sample assessment materials available for the NEA, and these are for you to use uh, as practice projects. And you can fit these in whenever it works best for you, be that the summer of year 10, or January of year 11, whenever you do feel it is the most beneficial for your learners. There is also a sample mark scheme. And these are sample assessment materials, including the mark schemes, are available for you to access on the NCFE website on the specific VSERT page. NEA example responses are also available to download in the assessment materials section of the qualification page on our website. And they will not be differentiated by level for this new model as they are not determined until the marks are combined for the EA and the NEA and the overall marks are added together. There is a top band four and a top band, uh, and a band two level response for each qualification in the exemplar NEAs. And the example on this slide is a band two NEA response. And on this slide is a band four NEA response example. There will now be more detail about the exam assessment, including the sample assessment materials that are also available. To summarise, the EA is 40% of the technical award for graphic design. It is a written examination that is externally set by NCFE. Learners have one hour and 30 minutes to complete it, and it's graded out of 80 marks. There is a mixture of multiple choice, short answer and extended response questions, and it targets assessment objectives AO1, AO2 and AO3. 
Examination date is May, June every year and there is only one attempt at the exam and booking for the EA is upon registration. Please refer to the external assessment timetable on our website for the confirmation of the exact EA dates, which will be published a year in advance of the actual EA. SURPASS is our online assessment system that allows centres to deliver ex external assessments securely on screen. Technical requirements that must be met to run the online assessment system are outlined in our technical specification document. You need to complete the registration form and a member of the relevant team will contact you. Once you're approved, there are various support guides aimed to support members of staff involved with the different stages of the assessment process. For more information, visit www.ncfa.org.uk slash qualifications slash centre dash assessments dash support slash online. There are three main types of questions on the external assessment and where possible, they have been set within context of the subject with real world cases. The first type of question is multiple choice and usually worth one mark. Multiple choice questions cover assessment objective one. The second type of question is a short answer and they're usually around two to four marks. The third type of question is extended response questions and these are usually worth six marks or more. To support effective teaching and learning, the table in the tutor guidance document provides centres with the command word taxonomy used for the EA. It illustrates the range of command words, associated assessment objectives and their intended use. It's intended to support centres when creating assessment tools. Please note that these cover the full range of the level 1-2 technical award qualifications and some may be more appropriate for certain subject areas. You will find this document in the support materials section of the qualification page on our website. There are also sample assessment materials available for the EA and again these are for you to use as mocks and you can fit these in whenever works best for you. The mark scheme is also available. Sample assessment materials including mark schemes will be available for you to access on the NCFE website on the VSERT page. The next few slides will provide a brief overview of the quality assurance process and then provide some information in relation to moderation. The assessor will assess and mark all loaner evidence for the NEA in line with the mark schemes provided by NCFE. The assessor will also complete the learner feedback form which is available in your assessment pack and this will be released within the NEA brief on the 1st of September. As the NEA is moderated, the centre's IQA efforts need to be focused on upfront standardisation. Centres need to apply their own IQA policy or processes based on the outcome of standardisation activities they complete to satisfy their own internal quality assurance. Standardisation will ensure that assessors' judgments are in line with the qualification specification and the grading criteria. In line with JCQ guidance, centres should inform learners of their centre assessed marks before marks are submitted to NCFE to allow for any internal centre appeals. Centres should make it clear to learners that any centre assessed marks are subject to change through the moderation process. Once the centre has submitted the marks to the portal, learners will then be selected for sampling and their evidence will be reviewed by a moderator. Moderation will take place remotely and feedback will be provided on results day in a final moderation report that can be accessed on the portal. All centres with active registrations will have an annual monitoring review to review your policies and procedures. Your quality reviewer will contact you to suggest a date and time to conduct the annual monitoring review. No learner portfolios will be sampled during this review and the quality review will not provide any subject specific guidance. 
For further support, do visit our annual monitoring review page on our website and view the user guide to the annual monitoring report. And if you do have any queries about quality assurance, then please contact the external quality assurance team using the details on the slide. You will be asked to submit marks for each learner on the portal and we will use these marks to select learners to be sampled based on the JCQ sampling strategy. A sample will be requested based on stage three and you will be able to view learners selected for sampling on the portal. Learners selected for sampling will be visible on the portal the day after the window closes. Centres will then be required to view the sampling plan on the portal and upload learner evidence for the sampled learners within 48 hours. And guidance on how you can do this can be found in the portal user guide. During moderation, the moderator will assess the sample. And following the moderation process and the outcome of our quality checks, one of the following three marks will be applied to your cohort. The provider mark um, has been accepted, the regress mark has been accepted, or the moderator mark has been accepted. You will receive a moderation report to explain the outcome of the moderation activity, along with areas performed well and areas for development. For further information and guidance, please do refer to the Preparing for a Moderation Review on our website. The next slide will give you some details of the resources and support that will be available to you and your centres. Visit ncfe.org.uk to find everything you need to know about onboarding, quality assurance using the portal, moderation and assessment, certificates, training events, forms, support visits and much more. You'll also find a dedicated area to support the delivery of essential digital skills, functional skills, T-levels as well as VSERTs, including curriculum support and assessment resources. If you're involved in the teaching assessment and quality assurance, then the following pages we think will be the most useful. Firstly, the visa uh, page, and then the delivery support, the assessment support, the customer and learner support, and preparing for quality assurance. On our NCFE website within the VSERT page, you'll find the information about why to choose VSERTs and the 14 to 16 schools brochure that contains information about key stage four vocational education and how to learn more about our VSERT qualifications. You could also use these um, as an option on open evenings to help learners make informed decisions about which qualifications to take, what the progression opportunities are and the career prospects. You'll also find the link to each subject specific page and contains the information such as the specification, sample assessment materials and teaching materials. We also have a parent, supporter and pupil visa information hub where the resources are aimed at helping parents and learners make informed decisions around VSERTs, including a parent guide, what learners think about VSERTs and subject guides. On both pages, you can also use the get in touch function where you can request more information on the subjects that you're interested in. And there is also the opportunity to tick the marketing communications box to receive updates on our qualifications, events and news relevant to you, whether that's via email, on the phone or through our social channels. You can also use our search our qualifications function by adding your subject area or qualification code or you can select VSERTs in the features box. Always ensure that you're on the correct page by checking the qualification accreditation number. And this is the page for graphic design. And if you scroll down, you will see some brief information about the qualification, including the career opportunities and the performance table details. And if you scroll further down, you will see the support materials tab. This is where you'll find the qualification specification, the synoptic connections document, and the tutor guidance document. In the assessment materials tab, you will find the assessment materials that are available for both the NEA and the EA. And lastly, the teaching materials uh, are also available to download here. And if you don't have a login, it would usually be your exams officer who can help. You can also refer to the portal user guide on our website for further support. There are classroom packs containing ready to go teaching and learning materials with everything that you need to deliver the visa effectively. The classroom packs will be in a digital and editable format and are free to download. There will be schemes of work which completely out outline entire units of work based on one hour lessons for each content area. 
You will have complete PowerPoint presentations covering the teaching content from the specification and includes teaching activities that could be used with your learners. There will be comprehensive workbooks to complement the scheme of work, which will contain classroom based activities and learning roundups to recap and assess learning, as well as independent study tasks that can be used as homework or flipped learning opportunities, whatever you decide. And as with all these resources, it is best to use them and adjust them to suit your learners. Lastly, using a, uh, actual assessment material is a good way to make revision effective. And as we've already mentioned, there are also sample assessment materials that are available for the EA and the NEA for you to access on our website. On our website, you'll find everything that you need to support you with assessment. In the Access Arrangements and Reasonable Adjustments section, you'll find information about paper modifications and ways that fair assessment can be achieved and the associated policies. In special considerations, you'll find the policy, the definition, timescales and how to submit a request for external and internal assessment. Before booking an external assessment, please do refer to our external assessment timetable for booking cutoff dates, assessment dates and times and results release dates. For our VSERT qualifications, you are required to make a booking for the external assessment at the time of registration and you will be prompted to select an external assessment date before completing the registration on the portal. For the external assessment also, there is a document called the Regulation for the Conduct of External Assessment. And for the internal non-exam assessment, there is a tutor guidance document which includes details about administering each NEA task and the NEA regulations. There is also a qualification specific instructions for delivery document or QCID and this gives specific information for the different qualifications. So for example, if the assessment needs to be invigilated or supervised. There is a visa FAQ section on our website where you can use the categories to find the relevant answer to your questions. If you have a question that isn't covered, you can always use our live chat feature or contact the customer support team using the contact details on the slide. On the VSITS delivery support page, you'll see we offer a range of delivery support events for VSITS, such as preparing to teach and standardisation events. There is also a VSERT playlist on our YouTube channel and there are numerous webinars, CPD sessions and training events which can be accessed on demand. Other support that is available includes our external quality assurance team who you can be contacted in relation to anything about quality assurance. And our wonderful customer support team who you can help and support with first line inquiries, registration queries and bookings on the portal. The provider development team supports staff to ensure you're prepared to teach the qualification and are clear on the requirements for the delivery and the assessment of the qualification. We can provide tailored interventions to meet individual needs of the centres as well as offering a range of other services such as monthly webinars, training sessions and workshops as well as consultations if required. If you have any other questions or require further support you can contact us directly at provider development at ncfa.org.uk and your question or query will be directed to a subject specialist within the team or you can request a support call via our website. This is the end of this webinar and we hope you found it useful. If you'd like to help us make any future improvements and or changes to the service and support we provide, please let us know at provider.development at ncfe.org.uk. Thank you for listening. On behalf of everyone here at NCFE, we wish you a continued successful year.